Hey guys, it's Holly from The Run Experience. Today I'm giving you my beginner running technique head to toe breakdown. I'm gonna tell you why your running technique matters as well as give you a few things to focus on on your next run. Okay guys, so before I break down this technique from head to toe, I wanna talk about why I care so much about your running technique, especially as a beginner. As you start running, it is so easy to get totally beat up by your runs, especially if you've gone from not working out a ton to working out then maybe four or five times a week. There's a lot that can happen in such a short time, especially if you're not focused on how you're running. So I love the technique stuff just to kind of reset the system, keep your body prepped and away from injury, as well as just make your running a little bit more efficient. So there's things we can work on like breathing and of course our actual posture and, and form that can allow us to run further and longer again without beating up that body. So let's get into the head to toe breakdown. Guys, so we wanna focus on this running technique by body part and more of a, in a drill situation. So drills can be used to either exaggerate something that we're doing to take a closer look, or it can be used to just bring awareness to something. Especially as a beginner runner, maybe there are certain aspects of what I'm gonna talk about that you've never even thought about before. So use this time on this drill to focus on those. We're gonna start with the upper body. I'm just gonna kind of start from here up, just talk about your head position, your shoulders, and your arm swing. Let's start with the head. So. All day you're on a computer, a lot of you guys, or you're looking down at your phone or you're looking down where you're walking. And so there's this little rounding over that tends to happen, this little slump over. Maybe I'm not totally, um, even if my eyes are up a little bit, maybe I'm still letting myself just kind of collapse over. If you run like this, especially over the course of a few miles, it's going to add up and it's going to affect everything else down below. So what I want you guys to think about here with the head position, a good way to kind of track where your uh, chin should line up is you can take your middle finger and your thumb, place that on your collarbone right here, just about there, and then use your index finger to go just below the chin like this. And it kind of sets your chin up in line with where you should be. So if you're too far forward, you'll notice the, uh, the finger is not gonna be right under the chin there. And then of course the other direction as well. So try to get that set up kind of like a little tripod for your chin. And then from there you can take it away. This is where you wanna set up your gaze for your running. As far as your shoulders go, this is where a lot of us hold our tension, again, from the rounding forward, maybe at our desk job or whatever it is. Uh, we let a lot of tension get built up here. Bringing those shoulders back, focusing our attention on that and just letting everything kind of relax and remembering to relax throughout the run is key. Lastly, for that arm swing, this is a big one. A lot of times we just kind of let our arms do whatever they wanna do when they run. A lot of times, we cross in front of ourselves, which takes a lot of our power away because we're moving forward. So this is cutting off a lot of our energy moving forward. So simply just thinking about keeping those arms swinging right next to your sides, keeping those shoulders relaxed, and then that head up a little bit more. This is just what the top half we wanna focus on here is just a nice, efficient, relaxed upper body. So that's gonna be our first uh, focus area. Guys, the next thing I wanna talk about is your hips. There are a lot of things that can go wrong with these hips that we don't really think about, especially in our normal day-to-day -day walking. So two key points I wanna hit here. One is that the hips tend to not stay pushed forward in a nice, strong, uh, upright position, but instead we kind of spend a lot of time with our hips just relaxed back. They're not really doing a lot for our, our hip drive here. So just thinking about instead of letting your hips be behind you, but keeping them front the whole time when you're running. So I'm gonna show you guys just a little bit what that looks like. If I'm letting my hips kind of sit back and they're not doing anything for me, you'll notice my stride becomes a lot shorter and I become a little bit more rounded over. So kind of just like this, the little marathon shuffle here. <laughs> and now I'm gonna turn it around and turn my hips on. So I'm gonna press them forward, keep my body nice and upright like we've already worked on. And you can already see my glutes and my hamstrings are already working for me a lot more than they were before, even though that was a slow little jog, but it already felt a lot more stable for me as the runner. The second thing I want you guys to think about is not letting your hips collapse side to side. So there's a lot of room here for observation when you take one leg out of the equation, split your body in half. So if I'm just standing here and I take one leg out of it and I have my hands on my hips here, you'll notice after a few seconds, you start to collapse or sit into that hip just out of, out of nature. And so what happens is if we're doing this and we're training our body to catch each fall this way, we're gonna start running into a collapsing problem with each step of our running here. And a good way I like to look at this is creating kind of a window or a goal for a window between our legs or our knees here and trying to maintain that same distance the whole time we're running. So you'll notice, even if you have a you know line on the road or something to look at, keeping your feet equidistant on either side will maintain that window. And if it doesn't, if you're getting closer and closer together, you'll start to notice a collapse 
the knees will then touch and then you'll notice those hips are off off kilter as well so like i said just use a little line to train that there walking and running um, just to just even a little single leg stance as well just to make sure you're actually coming out of that hip keeping those toes nice and straight ahead and just keeping those hips forward like we already talked about that is going to be what we focus on for the hips in our running all right guys so we've done those upper body and the hip exercises now i want to talk about the legs and what they are doing for your running you know again this is what we focus all of our attention on if we are focusing on anything in our running but the reality here is the legs control a lot more than we realize so what I want you guys to think about today, just a very simple observation, is how you're picking your feet up off the ground using your legs. Are your hamstrings engaged? Are your glutes engaged? What I like to do is kind of find the in-between between a high knee position, you know, when you do those little high knee running drills, and then a butt kick position, you know, the same thing. We can use this as a drill as well. The pull happening in our running should be something in between that. So kind of right in between a high knee and a butt kick. Ideally, this is how we're getting our feet off the ground for that running. So it's a nice good pull position and what can happen here is that it turns the hamstrings on, encourages our hips to push forward like I was already talking about and nice glute engagement as well. So you can do a few uh, back and forth of butt kicks and high knees just to kind of find that in between position but work on pulling those feet off the ground a little bit sharper. Guys, the last part of this puzzle is going to be our feet, listening to how they hit the ground. I'm gonna show you a few examples, something to just take note of as you head out on the next run. If you are someone who maybe scuffs the ground, you'll notice, kinda of sounds a little bit like this, that little shuffle going on there. You will notice that uh, maybe you're just not really picking your feet up <laughs> off the ground the way you should. So what I would suggest if you are someone who does that is to pick the feet up a little bit higher, use that pulling technique I gave you on the leg section before. And um, if you're somebody who is just landing heavy, maybe a little bit more stomping, maybe you could focus on picking up the feet a little faster. So not higher, but a little faster, just to create a little bit of a lighter running there um, than you were before. So we're looking for stomps and scuffs as a starting point address those accordingly and your feet will be good to go for your running. All right guys, I know I just gave you a ton to think about, so we're gonna make this very manageable for you. I want you guys to go out for a 30 minute run. You're gonna break this up into running for five minutes and then spending the six minute focusing on one of the body parts I gave you. So you'll do that first five minute run nice and easy. The six minute you'll focus on the upper body, shoulders, arm swing, head position, five minute run, just normally how you would. That sixth minute you go into those hips, just bringing awareness and focus for one minute. All the way through down to the feet, giving all those things a little bit more thought than you normally do, and then spending the last six minutes of your 30 minute run, letting it all kind of blend together, just absorbing every bit you can. Nothing has to be perfect, but you will be well set up for that next starting run. Guys, if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button down below. We love to know what worked for you and what didn't. If you have any comments or questions, something didn't make sense about the technique, tips that I gave you, make sure you drop those in the comments below. And lastly, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Tons of new content coming out on the Run Experience YouTube channel every single week, and we want you guys to see it. And lastly, we have an awesome two week beginner running program for you, totally free. If you are look looking for some new workouts or ways to get moving, it is perfect some running stuff, uh, workouts for you, and some great stretching techniques and mobility work for you to try. All you have to do to get it is put your name and email at the link at the end of this video or down in the description and we will send those to you. Thank you for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.